This is a journey of, of vision. But then you say the magic word, Richard Garriott. It's as if, if you were gonna go make a film, like instead of just getting a camera, like buying a camera and buying a film, you actually had to invent a camera. You had to invent a film. I'm hoping players feel when they join Tabula Rasa is that they are being swept up in this truly galactic uh, battle. Tabula Rasa is supposed to be a near future science fiction epic story. I would say we're working on creating a fast paced action um, MMOG war game, uh, so with a sci-fi bent. To me, Tabula Rasa is somewhat of a cautionary tale about the hypothetical fate that might befall the Earth in the very near future, where the alien hordes that we know as the Bane uh, have finally returned to uh, wipe out the Earth, which has finally advanced to becoming a threat to their domination of the universe. Everything is based on kind of what we would call modern day science, just extended out, um, but then there's the, the element of the, the kind of a, a, a larger alien benefactor race, a, you know, a, called the ELO, which is a, a race that has kind of figured this stuff out already a long time ago. They kind of found the secret um, of the universe and then they end up sharing the secret with maybe some not so uh, morally pure races and one of the races um, kind of strikes back and that's kind of the story, the backstory of TR is that um, the wrong, this, this, this pure good science has fallen into the wrong hands and now these people, these, these Bane, um, have taken this science and are using it to try to take over the entire universe. When we set out to build Tabula Rasa, we said, look, you know, we want to uh, really wipe the slate clean from both a game design standpoint as well as a fictional standpoint and come up with something that was uh, you know, not only new and fresh but also really advanced the state of the art in some very important ways that we felt had uh, already in just this first 10 years of the gaming industry uh, become somewhat stagnant. We really want to grab those people that go, I hate MMOs, I don't like MMOs, they're slow, they're grindy, they're this, they're that, you know, it's not an exciting experience, I don't, you know, have a lot of time to sit around and play these things for hours and hours and hours. This game doesn't have a lot of slow spots, you can get in, you have a lot of fun, you can get in for two hours of our game and have a blast, you can get in for 30 minutes and have a blast. That's hard to do in a lot of other games. Uh, and Tabula Rasa actually intends to, and I think will be successful at offering new functionality, new uh, immersiveness, so that the, the player actually feels like he's making a difference uh, in the game, so that his, his actions make a difference in the game, the creatures see him and respond to him in a certain way, uh, and there are tactical decisions that the player can make to change the outcome of a battle, for example. That may sound simple, but technically it's hugely complex. Uh, and in terms of the marketplace, it's actually revolutionary. We're hoping to again offer something new for people, something they haven't experienced yet, and that is through a variety of means. One of the, one of my personal favorites, and the one that I've helped us focus a lot of energy on, is trying to create uh, these dynamic battlefields and this feeling that there's a war going on. The biggest thing we want from people, for people to have with Tabula Rasa, is just kind of a visceral combat exciting, um, fast-paced action experience. We want to play like a Twitch game in a way. We want to play like a shooter and, and have fast action, which is not like a lot of MMO role-playing games. Uh, but on the other hand, we have to handle the uh, load demands of thousands of players on a central server. And if you look at most MMOs, the creatures, basically, they just sort of stand around and wait for you to kill them. They don't really do anything, and even if to the point of like you shoot one guy's neighbor and he's like, where did Joe go? And then he just widely goes about his business and doesn't really do anything. Uh, and in these strike team meetings, we'll sit down with all of the disciplines and it's a, it's a big collaborative moment where the design staff is represented with the ideas about how this creature should behave and how they should function. Uh, technologies there saying, well, you, you can do that, but we have to change this, this code to do this for you. Um, and then, of course, the art developers, you know, the animators and the modeling guys are there, along with uh, art director representation to say, well, 
we can, you know, here's the parts that we can do, and here's ideas that we can change or contribute. So the the strike team process is really uh, key to a lot, uh, how we develop content on Tapio Rasa. And you know, something else to just keep in mind too, as a, I mean, I know you're just doing final final tweaks on these, uh, but always try to make sure that you know that not only are they really cool, which by the way, all these really are. Uh, but that they really force a player group to change their tactics um, when they're dealing with that particular uh, bad guy whenever possible. Um, the, the creature strike team process is very, very important because of the fact that um, the creatures in Type de Rasa have unique AIs. Hey, does that ignore your armor? I can't see your... Yes, it is ignoring my armor. Oh, it sure is. Yeah. Ouch. Okay. Is that correct? That is correct. You do not want to be next to him. What is the fiction behind that attack that makes it ignore your armor? Or is there an explanation? Um, he has um, good claws. Big really claws. big claws. Also, is it, it's his hand-to-hand -hand that ignores your Yeah. yeah. That fireball, yeah. though, did appear to do so, too. No. There's, there's no effect on hit. On the fireball? Yeah. The fireball, yeah. Um, and they're, they're all uh, sort of evolutionarily uh, compelling. So every creature feels unique. It feels like it has its own behavior and thought patterns behind its behavior in the, in the game space. If you look at most MMOs, the world uh, is so static that even if I kill a monster, I could walk back 100 meters, uh, wait for a minute or maybe two, and that same monster will actually fade right back in and be right back where they were before. And so the world is extremely repetitive and extremely static. Uh, and in my mind, extremely safe if you, especially if you're sitting, sitting around in a town. Um, we've changed that up dramatically with Tabula Rasa. After all, there's supposed to be a war going on, so the idea that things wouldn't be fighting each other seems ludicrous if there's a war. So we spent a lot of time making the creatures fight each other, and there's the good guys who are called the AFS, the Allied Free Sentience, and the bad guys who are called the Bane. And they're actually programmed to constantly be at war with each other. So when you wander into a map, there is a war going on. They're fighting each other, and they actually even fight over control points. You know, as you travel around the world in Tabi de Rasa, unlike most games where, you know, the, the world's really just sitting there waiting for you to come to it. Uh, in the case of Tabula Rasa, the evil forces, who all may have begun life uh, back in some main fortress on the far side of the map, those evil forces work their way across the world, taking territory, setting up bases, uh, and moving towards the friendly ends of the, ends of, ends of the world. Uh, players, on the other hand, as they fan out, or NPCs, even, even without the players, the game plays itself, the friendly NPCs versus the evil fa faction of NPCs. Uh, and so when the player comes back to it, not only do they see these battles going on all around them that they have to move through while they're on their missions, but a lot of their missions' goals, or a lot of the mission givers that you might originally pick up a mission from, live out here in this uh, contested area. And so if a base has fallen to Bane hands, uh, suddenly that might mean that whole swaths of our gameplay are actually offline to you as the player. My absolute favorite feature in Tabula Rasa, which in many ways actually surprises me because it's an area where, uh, you know, the Ultima series I don't think was nearly as successful, is in the combat system. And we really wanted to create this feeling that there's a war, you know, and this touchstone that we always go back to is, you know, the classic scene in Saving Private Ryan, and then it was also done in a video game called Medal of Honor, which is the D-Day beach invasion. And that really intense feeling of like bullets whizzing past your head and mortar rounds going off at your feet and you know waves of soldiers throw, being thrown at each other. We want to try and create that feeling in a massively multiplayer game. And that really hadn't been done before. The combat system that we have been exploring and refining uh, is a, a, quite a bit different than other, uh, than other MMOs or frankly most other games at all. Uh, it, it is a true role-playing system in the sense that it is my character's attributes and abilities compared to your character's attributes and abilities. But it's very fast-paced. It has immediate uh, interaction associated with you press a mouse click it immediately fires a weapon or fires off an ability that you might be using. But unlike most MMOs, where when you engage an opponent in combat, uh, the server basically runs a timer, and on that timer, each character involved in the combat takes their turn to do what I can often describe as turn-based whack-a-mole, and then who 